In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I created this photo using Photoshop. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different than usual because we're just gonna sit down, have a cup of tea and just talk photo editing because last week I posted this photo, as you saw earlier, to Instagram and you liked it a lot and someone asked me if I could do a editing tutorial on how I created it. So that's exactly what we're going to do. It's actually a photo I created during a photo challenge I did a couple of weeks ago. You can find the video to that right here. So if you wanna see how I actually shot the image, you can go watch that in that video. But now I'm gonna show you the editing behind it because that's really the important part of the, this image, I think, and that's really what you guys were more interested in seeing. Also, I need to mention something very quickly before we continue because I'm just a self-taught artist, just a self-taught artist, and I'm not sure if the things that I do in Photoshop are the way you're supposed to do it, but it's just the way that it works for me, and hopefully it will work for you too. So if I'm doing something wrong, just let me know in the comments, or write me or something, or just ignore it if <laughs> that's more you. Uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into the video. Now we're open it, opening it in Photoshop. Um, so yeah, let's see what's going on in all the layers. What we're going to do is that I'm gonna make all the layers invisible and then we're just gonna take one layer at a time and I'm gonna explain what I did and why I did it. So maybe it's gonna be a long video, I'm not really sure, but hopefully you'll learn something and I get to chat about photos, so. <laughs> Win win, I guess. Okay, so what you can see here is just the final image, and we're just gonna turn off pretty much all the layers and just strip it away. So, what you can see right here is just the raw image, almost a raw image, I think, before importing, importing it into Photoshop. I actually took it through Camera Raw where I pulled up the shadows a little bit and pulled down the highlights just to get a more flat image so that it's a little bit easier to work with. And then I cropped it as I want it to be. <laughs> you can't really see how I did that. And the reason that I'm all the way <laughs> in the bottom of the frame is because as you'll see in the final image is that I'm gonna lift my face a lot up <laughs> and the neck is gonna be a lot longer. So in the end it'll look more seamless and not as but I'm heavy as it looks right now. The thing I'm pretty sure that I started with was creating the new head. So that's the layer we've got right here and we're just gonna turn that off. So you can see it's pretty much the same as we've got underneath but it's just yeah a new layer that's lifted up. And now you can already see that the composition makes a lot more sense because the eyes are almost in the one of the lines in the rule of thirds. Uh, so that's why I did it like that. It's not completely perfect, but yeah, I think you, you get the point. So the next thing I did was that I put on all the hands. So you, as you can see here, I have a group for each hand. So we're just gonna start out by choosing the first hand and then I just took another hand like this and put it underneath to match it and then I took another hand <laughs> the third hand and finally yeah this hand so now you can see that all the hands are pretty well lined up but we kind of need some shadowing to actually make it look realistic. So that's what we're going to do right now. You can see in all of these layers, it's pretty much the same layers I have in all of the groups with the hands. It's I created the same layers, but then I created new layer masks so that I could draw in where I needed the shadows to be. So as you can see here for the first hand, it really makes a big difference. And then we're just gonna do the exact same thing with the second hand right here and the third hand right here and with the fourth hand. As you can see it really makes a big difference and really just makes it look a lot more realistic. So as you could see as I was turning the layers off, it's actually all the same layers. I've just created layer masks that will mark where I want them to be. You can see right here, that's where I created the shadow here and if I just draw it out it will yeah, be black hole all the way out, but that's not really what we want. So this is just 
perfect. So after creating all the hands, I created the body because as you can see, the body doesn't really line up and we don't want that um, top at the bottom because it just doesn't really look very nice. So right here, as you can see, and then I just created some shadows where the hands were to make it look more realistic. And after that, as you can see, you can still see that face um, in the background you can see all the clutter and all that stuff and we don't want that so the first thing i did is I just selected the bottom layer because we want the background to be at the very back <laughs> of the photo so that's a layer in the bottom so i just clicked this button right here with adjustment layers i think that's what they call and i just clicked solid color and i chose a brownish color maybe like that or something this is this is the one i i actually created uh, because i wanted the background to match the hair um a little bit but later i actually figured out that i wanted it to be blue instead because then it could match the eye color and that would be pretty cool too so i just created a new uh, solid color layer and made it blue instead and then i applied a texture layer in the back as well and then i applied just a Gaussian blur, which will just blur out the textures a lot so that it looks like I'm further away from the wall rather than st standing completely up against the wall and it just looks better. You can see here if I undo it. Yeah, you can see now that it looks more harsh and more clear and that's not really what we want. So we're gonna turn that blur on again. So the next thing I did is that I did some skin retouching as you can see right here. I just removed some of the spots on my chin because that looks ugly as hell. You can see it before and after. And I retouched something on my lips as well, just to make it look more clean, both because I don't want people to see my ugly, nasty old spots, but also because it just makes the photo look a lot more clean and polished and great. So yeah. The next thing I did was that I applied a selective colors layer and you can find that right here by pressing this adjustment layer uh, button and then you can choose selective color i use this all the freaking time so now you can see i've chosen red but you can pretty much choose any color and then you can adjust it to how you like it as i'm, as I'm doing right here so it's a pretty cool feature and i use it for pretty much all my images so yeah, that's what I created right here at the hair. And then I just created a layer mask and draw it in where I actually wanted the red to change. We're just gonna try to make it without the layer mask so I can show you what that would look like. So if you're doing this, and then we'll just delete the layer mask. Now you can see <laughs> everything is turning a little bit more red just because there's reds in the skin as well and that just doesn't really look as good. So that's not what we want. So that's why we create a layer mask so that we only select the hair and it's only the hair color that actually changes. The next thing we did is that we did somewhat the same for the lips as you can see right here. So you can see the first thing I did here was that I actually made a curve and I just, the, curve, the only thing it curved it really did is that it made it darker. I did a layer mask and just on the lips. The way I did that is if I just delete it right now. You can see right now the layers are affecting pretty much the whole image and we just want it to affect the lips. So the way we can do it pretty easily is by pressing L on the keyboard and we have the lasso tool and then we can just mark out the lips right here. Pretty, okay, that was very bad. Let's try again. Because I'm doing it with my mouse, it's very hard. But if you press Q, you can see what you've selected and I think it looks all right. So then you can just press right here, which is a button that will create a layer mask. And as you can see, the lips has turned red. The next layer is actually a highlights layer. So I went once again into the adjustment section right here and I chose levels. Now you can see if I just choose it right here, you can pull this one down and it will the highlights will get very bright, it's way too bright and it's a pretty, pretty nice tool that I use a lot. And um, so I use it here just for pulling up the highlights uh, a lot and then I again draw it in where I wanted the highlights to be. Pretty much just drawn it in where I want um, the highlight to be. Now to a pretty big step. 
this layer. Yeah, it changed, it changed a lot. But the thing that I did here, and I'm gonna try to do it again, is that I took this group here. It's pretty much, it's just, it's not pretty much, it is just all the layers that I've created that I've put into one single group. The way you do that is that you select all the layers, then you right click and press group from layers. Uh, yeah, so it's pretty simple. And then you press command J and that will just duplicate the layer. And now you can go in and you can right click and press merge group. And that will create just a single layer that you can then work on, but it won't have all the layers underneath. So you can now go ahead and apply a filter to it because you can't apply a filter to a group because I don't know why you can't. It, there's probably a great reason for it, but you can't. So <laughs> that's where we're gonna create a merged layer. And then, and this is something I do for all my images, I go to camera raw filter and I just do the final color adjustments. I'm just gonna try to do it pretty quickly what I, I think I did. I probably didn't do too much right here. Maybe a little brighter because I like my images very bright and then maybe a little bit more texture. Do we want some clarity? No, probably not. And then I'm actually gonna go to the color mixer because this is actually the one that I think changes the most and makes the biggest difference. Um, so the reds we can change right here. I actually like how it looks already, the color. Maybe even a little bit more saturated. I like that. And then mm, we're gonna keep the luminance where it is. And then we're gonna change the background color because as you could see before and before and after <laughs> the background uh, color is changed a lot to a different blue and I think it's something like this maybe. So yeah, I'm just changing the hue and uh, maybe also not as bright. I actually like toning it down a little bit. Yeah, then we can change the color grading here and the uh, effects as well. I always put some grain on just because I think it looks great. It looks a little bit more retro and, and cool. <laughs> And I also always go in here and do some adjustments. I'm just pulling them up and down and see where I like it. There's not really any rules with this, I think. Just play with it. Yeah, something like that. But now we're just gonna turn the real one on. You can see this one is a lot more desaturated. That's probably something I did in camera raw as well. And then we have the final layer, which you can see here, it's two. Uh, level of layers as well and as you can see when I turn it on it just created some lights so right over here in the left hand side I created some highlights and in the right hand side I created some shadows just to match the shadows on my face to make it look a little bit more realistic yeah I think that was it actually thank you for watching this video i really hope that it was helpful in any way if it was please give it a like and comment down below your biggest aha moment from this video if you'd like to see more remember to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified every time i post a new con a new content some new content <laughs> here's my instagram and until next time bye <laughs>